Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna from Hasna's Anatomy so we've already talked about the important landmarks in an introductory lecture on the abdomen and now we're going to talk about the fascia so we all know the skin of abdomen the only thing that's necessary in that layer is that there is a, a defect uh, around the middle part lying at the level of L3 L4 vertebra is the umbilicus after that let's assume we dissected we took off the skin we made a cut on the skin what will we see we will see the superficial fascia of the abdomen so the first point i want you all to remember is that the superficial fascia of the abdomen is divided into two layers these two layers are the fascia of camper and the fascia of scarpa what is the difference fascia of camper is the superficial fatty layer while the fascia of scarpa is a membranous layer so unlike in other regions the superficial fascia of the abdomen is split into a fascia of camper and a fascia of scarpa the camper's fascia is more superficial and it is fatty the fascia of scarpa is deep and it is membranous this splitting of the superficial fascia mostly occurs at the level below umbilicus above the umbilicus both of these fascias are merged and there is just one layer of superficial fascia but below the umbilicus there are two layers i hope you can remember that so the superficial fatty layer is basically going to cover this entire area and as it goes towards the external genitalia in the male penis this fascia is going to be the same fascia of camper just that it will be devoid of fat and in the scrotum the fascia of camper becomes the dartos muscle now let's talk about the deep membranous layer or the scarpa's fascia this is very interesting because there is going to be a clinical associated with this the fascia of scarpa similarly is going to be surrounding the abdomen but when it becomes continuous with the external genitalia it changes its name to the colles fascia so if someone asks you what is the colles fascia you will know that the continuation of the deep membranous layer or the fascia scarpa of the abdomen into the perineum is the colles fascia what's so important about this deep membranous layer is that in the various parts or the regions of your body the membranous layer is attached to the deeper layers i hope you understand what i'm trying to say so let's view the abdomen from the side this is the umbilicus this is the abdomen all right so let's suppose that this is the scarpa's fascia and let's suppose that this is some uh, deeper fascia or uh, in the thigh it is known as the fascia lata deep fascia yeah that is lying deep to the fascia scarpa what happens here we all know there is a urethra where the urine is formed and then it has to pass out through the external genitalia so suppose if there is a rupture in this urethra what do you think will happen urine will leak into the thigh into the genitalia everywhere it'll start leaking however this is not the case in a normal person and that is due to the attachment of the membranous deep membranous layer of the fascia with the deeper fascias and where is this membranous layer attached and there's a diaphragm this is the inguinal ligaments this is the pubic tubercle the inguinal ligament begins at the pubic tubercle up to the anterior spear iliac spine and then we have the iliac crest all right what are the attachments of the fascia scarpa which is a very important question the fascia scarpa is attached around number 1 the pubic tubercle number 2 the body of the pubis we all remember in the hip bone we had the pubis so the pubis bone body that is the second attachment then we have the posterior border of the perineal membrane for now just memorize these soon you will understand what these structures are then we have margins of the pubic arch and finally the most important concept here is the holden's line scarpa's fascia of the abdomen or the colles fascia of the perineum is attached through this holden's line holden's line is very important this is a line which is located just lateral to the pubic tubercle and it runs a laterally about 8 cm 
from the pubic tubercle. This is also a site of attachment of scarpa's fascia to the deeper layers. All right. So these attachment of the scarpa's fascia or the coli's fascia is how there is prevention of extravasation of urine in other parts of the body like the thigh especially all right so over here what happens is this extravasation cannot take place because basically the scarpa's fascia is attached to the deeper layers so this extravasation does not take place in normal being however the superficial fascia is continuous with the superficial perineal pouch Wherever there is the word perineum, that means it has something to do with the area of the pelvis, uh, lower pelvis and the external genitalia. Superficial fascia and superficial peroneal pouch, they have no attachment between each other. Hence, extravasation of the urine will occur in this pouch. So now that we've talked about the fascias and their important attachments, we can begin the discussion of the contents of the superficial fascia. We all know that the superficial fascia contents always include the cutaneous nerves or the nerves that supply the skin, the cutaneous vessels, the vessels that are supplying the skin. So let's begin that discussion. How is the abdomen skin supplied? Here is a diagram that I want you to make sure to completely understand and learn how to draw. What you need to know is that what nerves are supplying the anterior abdominal wall? Remember these levels that from T7, T8, T9, these supply the part above the umbilicus. The nerve supplying the umbilicus is T10 spinal segment nerve. And below the umbilicus are the rest of the nerves including T11, T12 and L1. When asked what is the cutaneous supply of the abdomen, you have to talk about two nerves. These are the anterior cutaneous nerves and lateral cutaneous nerves. Anterior cutaneous nerves are responsible for supplying this entire anterior area, while the lateral cutaneous nerves will supply the lateral side of this anterior abdominal wall. Before we get started, I'd like you to know that the anterior cutaneous nerves are derived from the T7 to T12 and the iliohypogastric nerve. The iliohypogastric nerve is a branch of the L1 spinal segment. T7 to T12 and L1 is the anterior cutaneous nerves supply. T12 is also known as the subcostal nerve as you all remember. What's important is you remember these segments. Up to the umbilicus, it is the T7 to T9. On the umbilicus, the spinal segment or the dermatome is the T10. After that, which is below the umbilicus, T11, T12, L1. So the anterior cutaneous nerves are basically derived from the lower intercostal nerves. In the thorax, we studied that the thoracic nerves are basically intercostal nerves, right? From Let's talk about the T7 to T12 first. A little coarse on how they emerge these nerves basically run in the intercostal spaces all right suppose this is t7 nerve running in the intercostal space what it does after that it pierces the internal oblique muscle which lies in the abdomen to become superficial you have to pierce certain layers and for that you first have to pierce the internal oblique and then it pierces the rectus sheath and enters the rectus sheath then it pierces the rectus abdominis muscle lying inside the rectus sheath. So the layers of the abdomen are such that there is the first internal oblique muscle. Outside that is the skin. There is a sheath that encloses the rectus abdominis. So let's suppose this is the rectus abdo internal oblique muscle, rectus abdominis muscle. This is the rectus sheath. This is the rectus abdominis. So outside is the skin. To get to the skin, it has to pierce these important layers. First, the internal oblique and then the rectus sheath and then the rectus abdominis to finally give medial and lateral branches to supply the anterior abdominal wall. The nerves T7 to T9 will supply above the umbilicus. Why are there anterior cutaneous nerves? And the nerve T10 will supply what? the umbilical level and then the rest the subcostal will supply below the umbilicus and finally the iliohypogastric nerve this nerve is not going to pierce rectus sheath otherwise all nerves pierce the rectus sheath the iliohypogastric nerve emerges 2.5 centimeter 
above the superficial inguinal ring and from here it goes to supply via its branches the anterior abdominal wall most lower part of it we have another nerve known as the ilioinguinal nerve which is giving anterior cutaneous branch to supply skin of the external genitalia and some part of the medial side of the thigh let's talk about the other nerves that give cutaneous supply to the abdomen the lateral cutaneous nerves that have to supply the lateral side who supplies the anterolateral portion of the abdomen yes these are the lateral cutaneous nerves however these are derived not from all these are only derived from the T10 and T11 intercostal nerves so T10 and T11 basically what they do they pierce the external intercostal muscle because they want to go towards the skin so you have to pierce the deeper layer so external intercostal muscle has to be pierced after which these two divide into a large anterior branch and a short posterior branch to supply the lateral side of the skin so this is the T10 and similarly comes the T11 so what about the lateral cutaneous branches or the lateral cutaneous nerves of the subcostal and the iliohypogastric nerves well these are responsible for supplying the gluteal region if you all remember only thing responsible for supplying the lateral side of the abdomen are the T10 and T11 nerves so this diagram becomes quite simple when you understand this concept do not forget these dermatomal levels now let's talk about the cutaneous vessels so vessels can be correlated with the anterior cutaneous nerves and the lateral cutaneous nerves anterior cutaneous nerves are accompanied by the anterior cutaneous vessels however the tricky part starts is what are these a branch of so if you all remember we studied the internal thoracic artery it divides into its terminal the musculophrenic artery terminal branches the superior epigastric artery because there is a superior there has to be an inferior so inferior epigastric artery a branch of the external iliac which we'll study later these two the superior and inferior epigastric both give cutaneous branches that accompany the anterior cutaneous nerves and supply the skin of the anterior abdominal wall so obviously the lateral cutaneous vessels will accompany them lateral cutaneous vessels are basically branches of the posterior intercostal arteries the lateral cutaneous branches of these lower posterior intercostal arteries are going to supply the lateral side of the abdominal wall accompanying the lateral cutaneous nerves so posterior intercostal arteries the other arteries include branches of the femoral artery first branch femoral artery gives is known as the superficial epigastric now i want you to be very careful with the two names this is superior this is superficial all right superficial epigastric artery supplies skin below the umbilicus then we have the next branch of femoral artery which was known as superficial external pudendal artery this was responsible for supplying skin of the external genitalia and the lower part of the abdomen we have the superficial circumflex iliac artery now this artery runs laterally below the inguinal ligament to supply that area so that was all for the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall tune into the next video where we will discuss this important structure the umbilicus thank you so much for watching do not forget to subscribe to my channel